Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Root Double Before Crime After Days Extended Edition. In the last episode, we find out there were more kids on camera here in this facility. And now, Anna says if, um, she asked if anyone can use telepathy. Uh, I'm pretty sure no one can use telepathy here, or BC as she stated. Telepathy is a telepathy. What? Wait, I... There is such a thing as telepathy. People use telepathy now. What do you mean it's not uncommon? What happened? Otasi looked at the others in total shock. But he was the only surprised one there. Me too! People can use telepathy now. I want to use that. That sounds cool. え、本当です。ああ。ここで言うテレパシーというのは離れた場所にいる人に声を届ける能力です。でも、no one in 500? That, that's a lot. Wait, hold on. Maybe Yuri can use it. Hmm. Well, I mean, wouldn't that mean the kids grow up into adults and then... Then they would pretty much not be as rare then? もちろん、レスキュー隊に使える人はいなかったよ。お、what it was still hard for him to believe, but after seeing their reactions, it seemed Watase had no choice but to accept it as the truth. Oh, yeah! I must you know. Oh, but, but telepathy's not. Okay. Yeah, see, we got the same mind. It's been scientifically proven. What are you talking about? It's scientific. Let me look this up. Okay, we can't find anything on these computers here. I, I didn't actually go look it up. I, I want to, but they're in my way. I can't get to those computers. Beyond communication. What? Well, is that where you're not how you're supposed to talk to people through their mind? So what, we put images in their heads? It but even if what she said was true... Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's a better chance than win, winning the lottery. Wait, wait, those kids? The, the, the ones that were on the camera? Wait, wouldn't they have already contacted the surface then? I would assume they would have. Of course, it would be easier for anyone. For everyone. Just then, Anna's words cut off by the sudden sound of a voice and white noise echoing through the room. <gasps> Wait! That means that guy that's talking to us in our in our mind a long time ago to save her. 
save Yuri from the fire is his voice. Whatever his name was, I totally forgot. Uh, this is Serious Commander Murakami. <gasps> the radio is working. Wait, they're at the surface? Azami took out her PDA and spoke directly into it. Commander? Alright, we gotta talk fast. Sorry, I thought she was done. We gotta talk fast. Uh, yeah, see? Oh no. Zami then told Commander Mirakami everything that transpired up until that point. Oh, okay, so she did say, okay, I thought I got cut off all of a sudden. That'd be very inconvenient timing. About how they'd reunited with Watase and then saved Yuri, Anna, and Ukita. It appears she was keeping Watase's amnesia a secret for now. Hmm, that's a good thing. I don't know. Maybe? Once Kazami had finished her report, Commander Mirakami paused, then spoke again in a defeated voice. Wait. Then where are my other colleagues? The two guys that I was with. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Kazami listened calmly to Commander Murakami's solemn voice before speaking again. Uh, he's gonna say he doesn't know because they didn't tell him. Oh, maybe he does know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. Oh, that, that was it. I thought that we had that as a fact. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Oh. oh no, they didn't make it, did they? Oh no. Hmm. So that, and also the monster. Oh. So if we shut that down, we can escape. Or that. Expectation filled the group's faces when they heard Kazami's suggestion. Or maybe the bulk has, you know, op you know, takes like. 30 minutes to open up and close. That's probably what it does. However, impossible. Okay. So we have to go to area and take out the fire. Uh, hope we don't blow up and then escape. This is not good for us. Hmm. 
Hours. Oh, don't be cut off. Oh, nine hours. We won't have time to survive without those ADs. Everyone gasped at the words nine hours. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure they can't do that. They can't destroy the bulkhead because the radiation will probably destroy the whole town, and we I don't think anyone wants that. Hmm. That's not the point, Kazami. That's not the point. But, but, but still, what if, what if the boat had, uh, you know, got destroyed? Let's just, uh, hypothetically say. Uh, wouldn't the radiation all just go up into the surface and kill everyone in town? In the city and prior to the country? I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not what anyone wants at all. So diamonds can't break it. The normally composed Kazami was in total shock. Oh, um, I mean, I hope maybe you should ask the commander of uh, their other ADs around. We we probably need that a lot. Oh, dang it! Suddenly, his voice started only coming through in bursts. Repeat. The commander apparently realized that the transmission was reaching its limits as he started talking much faster without pausing. Okay, what's his message? Ba thank you, but I need, I need specifically where, where, where? That, that doesn't help me. Where are they? Where, where are the hidden, hidden ones? You know, the ones that are secretly hidden for super duper emergencies. Not just regular emergencies, super duper ones. Okay, just keep doing that. Thanks. His voice was full of grief and pain. Kazami quietly listened to him with a bitter look on her face. So, I'm counting on you, Takiban. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kasasagi? Hmm, as much? Uh-oh. No! Kazami desperately called out to him, but the only reply she got was the cruel hiss of static from the radio. No, no, this is bad, very, very bad. 916, 30, 30, 9, 44. Radiation. Wow, radiation. So, wow, I'm gonna end the episode here, everybody. We just learned a lot, a lot of things about telepathy and that they're stuck down here. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you everybody for watching this episode and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye. No, it's like face. She's like, man, food is not, I'm not hungry. No, it's okay.